Okay, Chair. Uh, how many children were involved in or affected by family court judgments in the 2010 to 2015 period? <clears throat> uh, I'd have to take that on notice, Senator. I've got no idea. Okay, thank you. And I'm not even sure that we could provide an answer easily either. I mean, it, it's a. Okay. I'm just imagining the complexities of trying to get extract that data from our database might be extremely difficult. Okay. For that period of time, that's a long period of time to, uh, to a number of children impacted, and because they're impacted in a number of ways, they, they're interim orders, of which there are about uh, 25,000 a year. There are application for final orders, which are about 20,000. There are other sorts of orders as well uh, that impact on children across the board. So it's a very wide question. Uh, and we deal with about 200,000 uh, individuals in a year, uh, excluding children. So uh, it'll be a very large number, but I've got no idea how we'll find that number out, but we'll do the best we can. Well, uh, Senator Madigan, you obviously have a, a purpose for asking the question, but is there any way you could perhaps confine or narrow the thing? Because uh, yeah. from what the... Uh, the CEO says they're going to spend the rest of their days trying to... Well, there are 40,000 divorce orders as well, uh, and uh, about, I'm not sure, 30,000 30, 30, 13, consent orders. So we're talking about huge numbers of applications. Anyhow, it, it, it stands, it's been taken on notice, but it, it, I can't I'm imagine... Not, I'm not sure that we can actually answer no, the question. Well, neither do I, but that's why I'm just suggesting you might want to try and confine no. your question to a more manageable... Um, thing that might get you a, an answer. It's up to you, of course, but uh, I'm trying to be helpful. Um, uh, well, my questions are pertain to does the family court um, keep statistics on the effects of the court on children? Question. That's that's more of a research project, I think, <laughs> uh, Senator. And not well. I mean, the court makes an order, uh, but like any other court in the land, there's uh, they don't, judges don't have no report back about what's the impact of their order. It works in the, in the criminal jurisdiction, in family law, they make an order, and unless that matter is brought back before the court, uh, they will have nothing further to do with that particular matter. So, in terms of whether it's a positive or negative outcome, uh, they would probably never know. Uh, so I'd be right in assuring, assuming then that um, you'd have no statistics about how many of these children don't have um, substantial ongoing contact with one parent according to court orders then either. Well, they, they also vary so much, Senator. I mean, there can be an interim order made uh, for children who are two or three years old. Five years down the track when they come eight or nine years old, there's another order made and those those... Uh, orders are changed, different contact or time with uh, 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 rules change. So, no, we don't have specific uh, data on uh, how much time individual children would spend with uh, different parents. Uh, does the Family Court um, have any information of um, if court orders were adhered to? Um, the welfare of those children consequent to court decisions? Do you do any follow-up to see what's happening? Well, we only know about orders that have reached, that's all. Sometimes um, orders are made for the family consultant to explain the orders to the children. Right. Yeah. Uh, Senator, in, in some matters, uh, the court does make an order that the family consultant meet with the children to explain the orders and the reasons uh, that the judge made those orders. Um, but um, unless the judge has made an order uh, requiring the, the, either the family consultant to um, continue to uh, maintain their relationship with the family or um, ensure that the independent children's lawyer continues for a period of time rather than being discharged upon the order, um, the court has very uh, little further to do with that family unless there's been um, a non-compliance with an order. Right, so you, you can't give me, there's no figures um, on whether court orders were adhered to? We would, we would uh, Senator, have details in relation to applications for enforcement. Right. 
um, if those applications are brought, we certainly would have that de that detail. Um, would you be able to supply that to the committee on notice? We can do that. Yes, take it on notice. Okay. Um, has the uh, department, the court, got any data, uh, or have you collected any data on the numbers of children that have attempted self-harm or suicide or experienced serious mental health disorders or conditions subsequent to family court interventions? Uh, no, Senator. And these, these are probably matters, I think, that are, would be subject to some sort of significant research project. <clears throat> I don't know that it's a role of the court to uh, to do this sort of research. It, these, these questions that you're asking have significant resource implications to try and provide an answer, but I think I can't, we don't have a database that would tell us that. No. It would be a manual examination of files and following up with the particular families in some way. No. So it would be a significant research project, I would think. So the department has no interest into the effects of oh, its no, intervention? Sorry, the court, the court yeah. all no, obviously well. hopes that uh, the orders that it make are effective and work, uh, but with the amount of work that the courts do, there is no capacity for them to call the families back and say, how are you going? Uh, so once the order's been made, uh, then the judge uh, would have no more relationships or contact with that family, as neither does the administration of the court. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Senator.